Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems Technical Tuesday. We're out here at the range and we're playing with our Ransom Rest a little bit. The Ransom Rest has been around for, I think since the 60s actually, and it is kind of the standard by which all others are judged for testing the mechanical precision of a pistol. Um, not necessarily the accuracy, right? More the precision for, from my perspective. Uh, this is how many rounds can the gun stack up when you completely remove the human element. Uh, ransom rests are also just the standard now for government contracts, not necessarily like local PD, but certainly if you were to go for like a military contract, they're going to shoot the gun in the ransom rest. So if there is a malfunction or something, you know, nobody can say, well, the guy had his thumb on the slide or whatever. The, the ransom rest kind of behaves like a human hand in the sense that it's gripping the gun with these soft rubber inserts, uh, which are, by the way, kind of custom for each pistol. So you can go buy. DR920 XR MR inserts. If you have a ransom rest, they, they do uh, make those now. Uh, but this kind of breaking effect when the gun fires is sort of similar to when a human fires it. And then you're pulling the trigger remotely with this, uh, with this hand, uh, I don't know, what is it, a bicycle thing? I, mean, what, I don't know, what do you want to call this? Whatever it is. So that. So you pull the trigger with that. Um, we're going to shoot five rounds through the gun. Through the ransom rest we're gonna see how it prints and then i'll shoot five offhand as well and you can kind of see the difference i doubt i'll come anywhere close to what a ransom rest can do we're just shooting some uh, fairly inexpensive fioki practice uh, fmj so i don't expect any crazy results but hopefully we'll stay inside a couple inches at 25. all right so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and load the gun you can access the magazine button when the gun is uh in the ransom rest so you can change mags from right there but you just lift it up and then let the slide forward i usually kind of ride it forward so that it doesn't slam it and then it's really easy to shoot your five rounds so we'll shoot five all right and then it's locked back when you're done and we'll drop the magazine and let's walk out there and take a look so I put a, uh, a pasty out there. When you set up a ransom rest, you shoot a couple rounds to kind of settle it in. I put a little paster out there where they were landing before. And it looks like we are, I don't know, I guess we're inside two and a half probably. Uh, let's see what it measures. We got some nice center hits and then I'll burn an inch. So at most it's about two inches. Yeah, it's actually inside, right, right at two inches, maybe a little inside. So two inches at 25 through the ransom rest. Uh, normally, for like a super precision 1911, the standard was closer to like three to four inches at 50. So if you just extend that out at 25, you'd probably call that like four inches at 50 or something like that. Um, with better ammo, I know it could do better. So we'll now take it out of the ransom rest, a little bit of a pain in the butt. You wanna tighten it down really tight when you put it in there. So you undo these, you undo these uh, knobs. And then you can see that insert is molded to the gun pretty much exactly to the grip. So I guess we'll just let that fall. Kind of pull this out of there. And wow, it's harder than I thought it was going to be to get that thing out of there. There we go. All right. So now we'll try to shoot an additional five at 25 on the top bolt. Okay. And I'm using a dot, which for me does help shoot groups quite a bit. A dot's a lot easier to shoot a group with, in my opinion. All right. I know that second one was a little wild, but... Yeah, that was, that was shot number two right there, which felt a little wild to me. But... Actually, I think I did okay. I guess that's four right there. And I beat the ransom rest, folks. That never happens. Um, yeah, I mean... Not if you count the flyer though, obviously. I do think it's a good way though to eliminate the human element for things like reliability, because that's really where 
if something happens or there's a bobble, you kind of, is it the shooter or is it the gun? And at least with that, if you have a malfunction, you know that there was no human element involved. Um, other than that, I mean, it does also go to show kind of how hard it is to shoot groups because we get customer service claims from time to time from people say, hey, my gun's not accurate. We come out with shooting ransom rest and it's always fine. It has never not been fine. So, I mean, take your time. And if you, if you do have an accuracy issue, maybe let a friend of yours try your gun out. If they're a good group shooter, it's just a way to double check um, before you uh, have a customer service claim related to accuracy. All right. Um, as always, we're here. If you need us, give us a call and we'll see you next time.